This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Many of us do a great job taking care of our loved ones, yet find it selfish to take care of ourselves. Here's your reminder that you deserve the same love and care that you give to others. Visit betterhelp.com super and prioritize your well-being. Hey brother, what if Peter Pettigrew never gave up the potters because he couldn't because he was never the secret keeper? This is a huge plot point in the story, but what if the potters had stuck with their original plan to make Sirius the secret keeper? It's a single tiny decision, but it could have changed everything. It's honestly kind of amazing, but as soon as we started pulling on the string, it was unbelievable how many things would have been different right from the beginning. It always felt like the mistake Lily and James made. They put their trust in the wrong person. But what if one little thing had been different? We remove that mistake from the equation. Would things have turned out the same? Would the Potters have survived? Would Harry have even been the chosen one? But I am the chosen one. Maybe not, Potter! Was this mistake actually the right decision? Could things have taken a much darker turn? Would the first Wizarding War have ever even ended? And if not, would Harry and friends have just grown up in very, very dark times? I mean, as if they didn't anyway. These kids cannot catch a break. True in the danger! <laughs> Today, we walk down each of the various timelines and paths that might have developed had the Potters stuck with their original plan and answer the question, what if Sirius had been the secret? I'm gonna die rather than betray my friend! It is not until Book 3, Prisoner of Azkaban, where we finally learn what events led up to the murder of James and Lily Potter on the night they died. An event that is without doubt one of the most pivotal moments in the entire history of the Wizarding World. It's the night Harry becomes an orphan, the night he becomes the Chosen One, and the night Voldemort falls, thus ending an entire war. It's what makes Harry so famous in the first place. It's the reason he has to go live with the Dursleys, it's the reason he got his mother's protection, and ultimately it's what dooms Voldemort to fail some 16 years later. And it all happens because the Potters put their trust in the wrong person. They hide the secret location of their home via the Fidelius charm in Peter Pettigrew, who, it turns out, is working for Voldemort, and immediately tells him where they're hiding. But alas, as we've said, this was not their original plan. Originally, they wanted Sirius Black, James's best friend, to be the secret keeper, but it was Sirius himself who convinced them to switch to Peter because he thought he would be such an obvious target. But what if he had not convinced them and just become the secret keeper himself? Because, interestingly, Sirius's entire argument that he's too obvious a choice Voice is actually irrelevant to this situation. Because what Sirius didn't seem to understand about this charm is that the secret can only be retrieved from the secret keeper if they volunteer it willingly. Meaning there's no way someone could use legilimens to just read your mind and discover the secret or even torture it out of you. Seems weird. It feels like the very point of torture is to make someone give it up willingly. But the point is, this means Sirius would have been the perfect secret keeper because as he so famously shouts in Prisoner of Azkaban, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die rather than betray my friend! And that, that right there is actually the beginning to the answer of this question. Because I don't doubt him for a second. Sirius would absolutely have died before revealing this information to anyone Ever. Meaning, as long as the Potters stayed in their home, they could not be found by Voldemort ever. Like, ever. So, in that case, the Potters never would have been attacked at all, and Harry would have been able to grow up in his house with his parents. Yay! I mean, it sounds like really boring child because he's never go outside or anything, but hey, everyone's alive. Sort of. We'll come back to it. But on the other hand, if Voldemort never attacks Harry as a baby, then he never falls out of power the first time, meaning the war just continues to go on and on and on. And honestly, he was winning. Like, if you've been watching the Fantastic Beasts movie, we've seen a lot of Grindelwald being really powerful. 
Voldemort was worse. <laughs> so yeah, in this situation, maybe he didn't kill Harry, but in the meantime, he probably just goes on to win the war anyway, and then just continues looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life, waiting for the prophecy to pass. And here's the other thing. Just because Voldemort absolutely won't find Harry doesn't mean he won't be looking. And if Peter's not there to immediately tell him the location, then there's very likely some other fallout that occurs via Voldemort's search. Because even if Wormtail doesn't have the secret, he's still working for Voldemort and they know they're looking for the Potters and he would definitely volunteer any likely candidate to be the secret keeper definitely at least serious and looping. Because make no mistake, just because you can't torture the information out of someone doesn't mean they're not gonna try. Sadly, this means Lupin probably ends up dying much earlier in life. And honestly, Sirius probably gets the ax too. Which then brings up an interesting question. What happens if a secret keeper dies without having ever revealed the secret to anyone. Because if you had told somebody the secret and then you die, then all the people you told become secret keepers. It's like what happens with Dumbledore and Grimald Place. But what would happen if Sirius died without having ever told anyone at all? Well, according to the author, the secret stays in the state it was. Meaning if Sirius died without telling anybody, then literally nobody ever would be able to find the Potters in their home. Now that said, it's possible Voldemort wouldn't kill Lupin or Sirius for fear of creating that exact reality, but I think they would die anyway because Snape. In this scenario where Sirius is the secret keeper, Snape actually still switches sides to the good side. Snape would have still been the one to overhear the prophecy and then tell Voldemort about it, and Voldemort would still decide to hunt down the Potters, which is what prompts Snape to go to Dumbledore to put them into hiding in the first place, a bargaining chip Dumbledore then uses to force Snape to become a double agent for him. And if you recall, despite changing sides, Snape still hates James, Sirius, and Lupin even all those years later. And I honestly don't think he would mind giving up any of them at all. He could even just play it off as if this was part of being a double agent. Gotta give him something. And you might think, whoa, I don't know if Snape would do that, but I think he would because, and here's where it gets a little bit sneaky, killing them might actually be a way to further protect Lily. Because if he kills them and one of them's the secret keeper, then he permanently seals away the information and Voldemort can never find her. Also interesting on the note of Snape though, is that if the war doesn't end that night, then it also means Snape is working for Dumbledore a lot longer, meaning he would absolutely tell Dumbledore that Peter was the mole. Or should I say rat? Yeah, I really should. It makes, it makes way more sense. <laughs> that would of course then force Peter into the open way earlier, although I doubt Dumbledore would kill him. Guys, before we continue, I need to pause real quick and ask a few other what ifs. Like what if you could wear the most comfortable underbritches every single day of the week? What if you could show up to the pool this weekend in swim trunks that were so stylish, so summery that the people sitting in their lounge chairs dropped their snow cones in awe of your coolness? What if you had handsome, breathable loungewear you could wear around just in the AC because the sun is just too darn hot outside? Well, with me undies, these are not what ifs, but but whens because they check all of these boxes. I mean, I wear me undies all year long, but in the summer, I am especially grateful for my comfy digs. Because the thing is, when you're comfy and feeling good, you're just more present to enjoy all of your summer plans. It's like science or something. And MeUndies has the lightest, most breathable fabrics to keep you cool and comfortable wherever you go. From undies, bralettes, and socks, to loungewear and swimwear, you can find something for all your summer plans. MeUndies also releases new prints all the time, like their limited edition Pride Collection. You can match with your partner, friends, or even your dog. Find your ultimate summer comfort in sizes extra small to 4XL. And right now, MeUndies has a great offer for our viewers. If you are a first-time purchaser, you can get 15% off. And for a limited time, if you sign up for their free to join me undies membership program then you get 25% off your first member item so get 15% off your first order 25% off your first membership item and a 100% satisfaction guarantee just head over to meundies.com slash theories one more time that's meundies.com slash theories link is in the description down below. But so, okay then it sounds like if Sirius was the secret keeper then Voldemort just wins the war 
right? Well, maybe. But we also need to take into account the fullness of the prophecy. It reads, The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches, born to those who have thrice defined him, born as the seventh month dies, and the Dark Lord will mark him as his equal. But he will have power the Dark Lord knows not, and either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord will be born as the seventh month dies. Dies. Now, of course, as we all know, Voldemort assumes this means Harry and indeed fulfills the prophecy by marking him as his equal. But if he can never find Harry, well, no reason to risk it, right? May as well kill anyone else who might fit the description anyway. Right? And there is indeed, of course, one other wizard boy the prophecy could have referred to. Neville. Why is it always me? Destiny Neville. Destiny. And here's the thing, Dumbledore knows Neville was the other possible chosen one. In fact, he even tells Harry about it. The odd thing is, Harry, that it may not have meant you at all. Sybil's prophecy could have applied to two wizard boys, both born at the end of July that year, both of whom had parents in the Order of the Phoenix, both sets of parents having narrowly escaped Voldemort three times. One, of course, was you. The other was Neville Longbottom. So if Dumbledore knew Neville was a candidate as well, it's pretty possible that he was also protecting the Longbottoms with the Fidelius charm. Meaning it's possible in that scenario that both Harry and Neville would survive infancy and grow up with parents. Either way though, don't forget the prophecy still states that eventually Voldemort will mark one of them as his equal. So even if they grow up longer, Voldemort at some point will absolutely unsuccessfully attack one of them and mark them as his equal and mark them as the chosen one. And who knows what happens then. But getting back to them as babies, if Voldemort can never find Harry, then it's pretty likely he would hunt down and kill Neville, even if he still plans on eventually killing Harry too. Okay, so now he's hunting now Neville. Don't forget, the prophecy says Voldemort will mark him as his equal. So if he finds Neville as a baby, it's possible the same thing happens anyway, and Voldemort still falls that night. But now, instead of Harry, Neville actually is the chosen one. And in that case, Voldemort would fall the first time at pretty much the exact same time, and we just have to retitle all the books Neville Longbottom and the Secret Chamber of the Philosopher's Stone. No, sorry, the Prisoner of the Chamber of Secrets. Neville Longbottom and the Deathly Hallow. He got for Christmas that year. Actually, no, you know what? Scratch that one. Even in this scenario, Harry would still have the invisibility cloak and parents. So, never mind. <laughs> Longbottom and his dear friend Harry Potter, who got one of the Deathly Hallows for Christmas that one time, but then had to lend it to Neville to be the master of death and stuff. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Sadly for Neville, in that scenario where he's the chosen one, he's actually still raised by his grandmother, though, because his parents would, of course, been murdered. What's super fascinating though, if you consider this scenario is what actually would have happened to Harry. Because in both scenarios, Neville ends up being raised by his grandmother. The first time because Bellatrix tortures his parents and in the other scenario, because Voldemort would have killed his parents. But if Voldemort had murdered Frank and Alice Longbottom and then met his downfall, would Bellatrix have just tortured James and Lily? instead. So if James and Lily were tortured to the extent that Neville's parents were, then the question is, who does Harry have to fall back on? Because remember, in this scenario, Sirius and Lupin would both be dead. And you might say, well, probably just still the Dursleys, right? But oddly, I don't think so, because I think also the Dursleys would have been dead. Because again, Snape. Voldemort would still have been looking for the Potters for a while, and Snape absolutely knew Petunia as kids and did not like her. But telling Voldemort where he might be able to find some of Lily's family, that might be information he would like to have. But so again, who takes Harry then? Because the reason he ends up with the Dursleys at all is because he has literally nobody else. Does he end up with Aunt Marge, his mom's sister's husband's sister? Ugh, I doubt it. Although, honestly, it is probably where Dudley would end up in this situation. But on the note of who would have taken Harry in, Dumbledore even says, Many would have done so more than gladly, would have been honored and delighted to raise you as a son. Now, granted, in that situation, Harry was a newly orphaned baby who just defeated the greatest arc wizard of all time and ended an entire war. So maybe that would have affected people's willingness to take him in. But honestly, I don't even think it matters because there is one wizarding family who absolutely would have taken in this lost orphan boy, no matter the scenario. Say it with me, the Weasleys. And who are you? 
Oh, sorry, sir. I'm Harry, sir. Harry Potter. Good Lord. Are you really? Yes, they would already have the newborn Ginny or else Molly would still be very pregnant with her. But do you think having one more kid would stop a family like the Weasleys from raising one more kid? No. Harry and Rod would instead have been raised as brothers. And instead of Harry running into the Weasleys at Platform 9 and 3 quarters, Harry and Ron would have run into Neville. And the three of them would have sat together and been best buds for life. I guess this would also mean that Harry and Ginny were raised as basically brother and sister as well though, so they probably wouldn't end up together at the end, which is, I guess, a bummer for them. Also, not exactly sure where it leaves Hermione in all this, but Hermione, anyone? Probably. Neville can just marry Ginny and Ron can, I don't know, stick it out with Lavender. And that is what would have happened if Sirius had been the Potter's secret keeper. Guys, if you have any other pivotal what if moments from Harry Potter, be sure to leave them in the towel section down below and let us know, did you like this style of video? Would you like to see more? Because we had a lot of fun writing. It was really fun to explore all these paths. Hey guys, quick announcement. If you've ever wanted to meet me and Ben in person or do trivia live in person, then I have great news for you. Ben and I are both going to be at RTX this weekend in Austin, Texas from July 1st through the 3rd. We're gonna be hosting a live trivia game on Saturday at 11. So if you're already going, make sure you make time to come see us and come play along. Otherwise, if you don't have tickets yet and you wanna come see us, there is a link in the description down below. Hope to see you there. But guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter content from us. If you want to see why James's sacrifice didn't count but Lily's did, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in another life.